Hello and welcome back. In this brief mini YouTube lecture, we're going to cover how electronic structure of an atom determines how it bonds with other atoms. Okay, and we'll start with the four familiar atoms, uh, which we talked about in this lecture that this video is associated with. All right, so we're going to learn about those four elements, H, O, N, C. Remember Honk? About 96% of the atomic content in a cell is made up of hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and carbon. The rest of the elements, trace elements, right? Okay, so the atomic number of a hydrogen atom equals 1. Remember when we learned about the atomic number? What is it that determines the atomic number of an atom? It's the number of which subatomic particle? But the proton, right? So in a stable atom, in a stable element, all right, the number of protons equals the number of electrons. So how many electrons is hydrogen going to get? It's going to get one electron. So I'm gonna draw a little electron above the nucleus of the hydrogen right here. And this electron will show having a little orbital path around the nucleus of the hydrogen, all right? And we say that in this inner shell, in this inner orbital, the innermost orbital of any atom, this can take up to two electrons. So let's write this down here. The innermost orbital of any atom can take up to two electrons, which I abbreviate as E to the minus. All right, so that means what? That means that hydrogen has one electron in its innermost orbital or in its only orbital, but that that electron is unpaired. It's alone. So how many can it take? It can take up to two, so that means that there's a little hole, right? And I'm gonna draw like a little circle. I'm gonna call this an electron hole where we can fit another electron, all right? So that's hydrogen. Now, the atomic number of oxygen okay, is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So its atomic number equals eight. So the innermost orbital, how many electrons can we have? Up to two. Bam, that innermost orbital is full, okay? How many more electrons can we put in the next orbital, which we will call the valence shell, right? The outermost orbital is called the valence. Well, if there's two here, and the atomic number is eight, and a stable oxygen atom, there would be six more, okay? But I'm gonna show you guys the convention for how we complete the valence shell, right? If there's six more electrons, we add them one by one, and this is just a convention, all right? So three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Do you see how I did that? I went clockwise at the 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock, back at 12, back at 3. All right? So we can finish the valence shell, this outer orbital circle, like that. So we can see that we have two rings, two orbitals. The outer shell is called the valence shell or the valence orbital. Now, how many unpaired electrons are in the valence shell? Here, to, here's, these are paired electrons, right? These are paired electrons. Here's an unpaired, so we can draw a circle. Here's an unpaired, so we can draw another circle. All right, so what we're doing with these little electron holes, these little circles will be revealed very shortly. Okay, so nitrogen has an atomic number of seven. Okay, so where do we put the first two electrons? One and two. Finish off that inner orbital, right? 
Okay, now how many more electrons can we put on here? Five more, all right? So three, four, five, six, seven. And again, you saw how I went clockwise around one at a time, all right? Let's draw the rest of this valence shell. Now, how many unpaired electrons does nitrogen have? One, two, three. All right. Okay, so finally, we move on to carbon. Carbon has an atomic number of six. So just take a moment and think in your head how you would complete carbon. Okay, thought about it? Good, all right. One, two, finish the shell. Three, four, five, six. Finish the valence shell. How many electron holes? One, two, three, and four. Okay, so let's center our picture again. Okay, now we're going to begin to combine these different atoms together. So hydrogen has a lone electron, an unpaired electron. Oxygen has two unpaired electrons. So what if we got hydrogen, which I'm gonna draw here in blue, what if we got hydrogen to share its electron that I'm drawing here in blue with oxygen? And what if I got another hydrogen to share its electron with the other unpaired electron of oxygen. Now, is hydrogen happy? Yes, because it has paired electrons. Is oxygen happy? Yes, because it has completed its valence shell. It now has eight electrons in that outer valence, okay? So what molecule have we created here? Oxygen with two hydrogens on it. Of course this is H2O. Okay, so let's take our new understanding on to nitrogen. Okay, I think blue, yeah, we'll stick with blue. So how many hydrogens can nitrogen pair with? One, two, three, okay, NH3. And those of you who are a little bit familiar with chemistry know that this NH3 molecule is ammonia. Again, hydrogen's happy because it's completed its valence shell. Nitrogen is happy because it's completed its valence shell with three hydrogens. Now let's move on to carbon, okay? Up to how many bonds can carbon make? Four, right? One, two, three, and four. Okay, it can make up to four bonds with other atoms. Now let's complete carbon off with four hydrogens. Okay, now we've created CH4 methane. Okay, so I think you now can see, okay, oh, there's one that we've left. All right, hydrogen course, can bond with another hydrogen to make H2, atmospheric hydrogen gas. So if you've ever taken a chemistry, then you know that hydrogen doesn't exist on its own as a monoatomic element in the atmosphere, all right? It always exists as H2 hydrogen gas. But here, we can see how the electronic structure of an atom determines how it bonds with other atoms. Up to how many bonds can carbon make? Four. Up to how many bonds can nitrogen make? Three. Oxygen? Two. Hydrogen? Just one. And it has everything to do with how many unpaired electrons there are in this outer shell called the valence shell. Okay? And very shortly in the lecture, we're going to learn that when atoms share electrons, this kind of bond is called a covalent bond. Co meaning sharing, valence meaning they're sharing that outer valence shell. 
And it's one of the strongest bonds that exists.